So this is a video I've been looking forward to making uh, because it's something I'm seeing a lot of in the shop. Um, it covers a wide range of GM vehicles um, starting in 2008 uh, on the Cadillac Escalades Tahoes. Uh, it was the first introduction of the GM six-speed transmission uh, um, and they've used it all the way up to 2018. You can find this in virtually every GM uh, truck application. Uh, the transmission is called the 6L80, 6L90 series transmission. And what I'm really excited to show you guys is not only what fails in these transmissions, but really what we're doing to address the issues because it, these, these are some very dramatic failures, but also the fixes are some real time fixes that um, you'll be able to see here on camera. So I'll go ahead and start taking this transmission apart. And first off, going through the points of failure, why they fail, and then what we're doing to fix them. So what we're gonna show you here today is a demonstration of what a pan looks like when your transmission has failed. So you're not, what you're not gonna be able to see, smell is the horrendous smell of the fluid right now, but it smells bad. Also, what we've got is a large amount of sediment built up in the pan. This is clutch material, and on our magnet, you can see it's all spiky. That's a lot of metallic material there, right? This is a transmission that's experienced a pretty severe internal failure. Okay, so we got this transmission apart. Um, I didn't take it fully apart, but I took it apart to the points of main failure here. Uh, right here, we got the one, two, three, four, five reverse drum. Uh, it's a very high point of failure, and we've got the pump assembly here. So now I'll go through each one of these um, and then explain where the actual failure typically starts. Um, on this one, two, three, four, five reverse drum, if you look in here closely, this component here is what's called friction or fusion welded. That's when we take two components and we rub them very fast and hard together and they actually fuse together. That, that, that is a form of welding. What we do to correct this issue because it's, this area is actually known to crack. And the common complaint we get with this is that it loses drive shortly after or you have no drive because it's completely broken. Now what we do is we've engineered a solution working with a machine shop where we gro groove out this area and put a bead weld in there. This not only strengthens the area but it also corrects the issue from ever happening again. If we take a look at our pump assembly and we flip this stator up. When our torque converter fails, we get a bunch of material that passes through because it's the first area connection. If you take a look here, we got, we got a bunch of grooves here. Um, this, in this one, the torque converter failure has caused our pump to fail. So this is another high point of failure that we need to look at when we're working on these units. Moving on here, we're gonna look at our torque converters. Now this is the area I really wanted to focus on. This is a torque converter here for anyone who hasn't seen one. This is complete. For the sake of this demonstration, I actually had some of these cut open. So if we, we take a look here, we have two bases. These are stock bases, okay? This would be this guy right here, the back section of this torque converter. This is called the torque converter base. We can see it looks very similar on this one, just not the other half of it. So why does this happen? Why, why did these things fail? If we take a look at these, we see three areas where they've been quite hot, okay? I'll let the camera zoom in on that. Now, if we flip them over, they correspond to the pads on the back side. Now, what, what happens in the factory when these things are assembled, first of all, let's bear in mind that these things are made from a pretty cheap steel, okay? Um, it's just a stamped steel. Now, when we with the, with the stamped steel, why is that important? Is when we weld these lugs onto the back, we create this heating. Now, what happens when we heat metal? It actually hardens in that area. Now, we have three areas that are hardened versus the rest of the surface. Now, this causes an uneven surface and causes surface flexing when we apply the torque converter. This is the result of uneven wear over time we see it's completely scored. There would have been a clutch material here, a disc that would have want, gone on here, and the lining completely comes off because you get uneven application, and 
we get failure and that material passes into the transmission and that's typically the result of what we get after. So I've actually got two of them here to show how common this is. You know, my, my local torque converter guy could probably send me a bunch of these that'll just show me um, how many of these actually fail. So what do we do about this, right? Here is the solution. So this is what's called a billet base, okay? All of our torque converters that are built, or all of our 6L, 80s, 6L, 90s that are built here are built with one of these billet based torque converters. What's the difference in these? You can't pick this up or feel this through the video, but it's about twice as heavy as the original stock base. Now, if we look at the back side, the pads are actually machined into the surface. That means there's no surface hardening. We have an even hardness through the whole material. It's also made from a much better quality steel and much more rigid, so there's no flexing. This addresses all three points of failure that exist in the factory base, and we, we don't see these things failing at the same rate as the factory one. So we've taken you through the, some of the key points of failure on a 6L80, 6L90 series transmission. Uh, we didn't do a complete teardown. We can do that on a later video. Um, but I wanted to address some of the key points of failure and what we're seeing uh, coming through our doors quite often. So if you are uh, an owner of a, a truck that might have this application, you know, anywhere from, as I've said, from 2008 through 2018, that's a 10 year period. Um, and, and you're noticing some of the symptoms that I've mentioned, um, come on in, uh, you know, if your vehicle is still drivable, of course, and uh, we'll be happy to look at that for you because these might be some of the things that are going on with your transmission.